What's going on everyone? I'm Travis Brown with the Bryan College Station Eagle. I'm alongside Amy Just from uh, the Lincoln Journal Star. We're here in Memphis at the FedEx Forum where Texas A&M and Nebraska will face off in the NCAA tournament. Amy, we talked to both teams today. What did you learn today from Nebraska and their players, their coaches, about how they're kind of gearing up for this NCAA tournament matchup? Yeah, so they're not shying away from the fact that this is history for them. Nebraska hasn't made the NCAA tournament for the men in a decade, right? And they've never Never won a game. They're 0-7 in the NCAA tournament in their program history. They're the only power school to have never won an NCAA tournament game. And they're not shying away from that. They're talking about it, like actively talking about it, but simultaneously they're also focusing on, you know, we're not playing ourselves, right? We're playing another team. And so they're focusing on that too, but they're not shying away from the historic moment that could come tomorrow. Mm -hmm. From the A&M side, I mean, this is a, a little bit of pressure on this team and Buzz Williams. There was high expectations. They were a top 15 team to start this season. And this was a season that should have gone on maybe to the Sweet 16 or, or the Elite Eight. And they just snuck in uh, to the NCAA tournament as a nine seed. Um, there, there's expectations to win a game. This is Buzz Williams' fifth season. They've only had one... NCAA tournament appearance and they lost to Penn State last year so they really not only wanted to be here they they wanted to win some games and it all starts with uh, Nebraska it's kind of two teams of of destiny does Buzz Williams get his first NCAA tournament win as an Aggie or does Nebraska break the streak of not getting an NCAA tournament win uh, we'll, we'll have to see about that what you, you got a little bit more on Nebraska's kind of health coming in uh, to this game what does the the health look like for the squad yeah so Nebraska in its previous game they had to go with a seven-man rotation which is one short of what they normally do because CJ Wilcher had the flu last week he played through the Illinois game felt like gar or he played in the Indiana game excuse me felt like garbage couldn't go against against Illinois and Illinois definitely used that short bench uh, to its favor and cruised uh, to win that one. So, but he, I talked to him today. He's feeling great. He's happy. He's excited. Uh, and we'll see him tomorrow. Yeah. From an A&M perspective, or really from this game's perspective, I'm really interested in this matchup because it kind of seems like what the other team doesn't do very well is, is a strength of team. A&M statistically doesn't necessarily defend the three point very well because they have a little bit more of a defense that packs in the zone. Florida was able to expose that in the semifinals of the SEC tournament, shooting in the 50 percentile from behind three-point range. Of course, Nebraska, great three-point shooting team, but A&M's number one in offensive rebounding in the country and number one in second chance points. Nebraska, not so great on the boards. Uh, kind of how are you seeing this matchup so far and uh, one that, that it seems like someone's going to have to be good at something that they necessarily haven't been good at this season to be able to win? Yeah, so what I think is going to happen is whoever – excels in like that metric one or the other more is going to win right I, if nebraska's in its bag and makes 10 threes to start the first half nebraska's going to win if a m goes off and grabs like six offensive rebounds before the first media timeout that, that doesn't spell good things for nebraska so that's what i'm going to be keying in on who can play to their strengths better and that's who's going to win tomorrow yeah and a m the thing that really that they struggled with in that florida game was getting into foul trouble if they have guys like anderson garcia wade taylor boots radford solomon washington and some of those starters who are really integral in everything they do get into foul trouble early. They don't really have the pieces to be able to support uh, filling in the gaps for those guys. Uh, they had three guys in foul trouble early in that game. Didn't really work out well for them. Uh, Solomon Washington, their strong defender. Anderson Garcia, one of the best rebounders in the country. They need all those pieces together to be able to be successful. So any foul trouble could, could put that uh, uh, in, into jeopardy. So uh, just overall kind of key to the game thoughts what what does Nebraska have to do to be successful and win this game honestly they need to go in and try to get defensive rebounds you're not going to stop Texas A&M from grabbing offensive rebounds rebounds it's not going to happen but you need to limit it as much as you possibly can just knowing that there's a bit of a size difference right like Nebraska's bigs are like great sized tight ends they're not your massive centers you don't have anybody like Purdue Zach Eady playing for you. It's a lot of like six, seven guys who do football tight ends. So if they can, neutralize isn't the right word, but at least make things a little bit better for them on that end, 
that'll be good for them. And then obviously the three, it doesn't matter where it comes from. If it's from Casey Tominaga, if it's from CJ Wilcher, if it's from Bryce Williams, if it's from Rink Mass, like I can continue to go on. It doesn't matter who, but somebody needs to step up and make those. Um, and that's the keys for them. Just trying to limit Texas A&M as much as you possibly can and then do the things that you need to do right in order to win. For Texas A&M, of course, it's going to be the offensive rebound and the second chance points. But, you know, for a team that has one of the lowest effective field goal percentages in the country, they shot 40% from three-point range over that SEC tournament run and a little bit of the end of the uh, the uh, regular season. If they can kind of find that hot street, if Wake Taylor can hit some threes early and get things going early, that's really been a key to their success this season. So just looking at if they can actually – hit some shots and, and then getting to the free throw line has been another way they've mitigated not hitting shots getting a dribble penetration getting fouled and hitting those free throws at times they've been really a great free throw shooting team and at times they've gotten to the free throw line 38 times in a game but shot 50 percent from the free throw line and that they can't do that they have to shoot more uh, free throws and shoot more field goal attempts than the other team to really be able to be successful. So those are two of the things to look at. And one thing I want to close with, uh, and I know I'm going to get his wrong, name wrong, Kise. Kese. 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 I Kese. Uh, you, an interesting little story that he was recruited by former Texas A&M uh, men's basketball head coach Billy Gillespie while Billy Gillespie was at Ranger Junior College. Uh, really interesting story coming to small town Texas from Japan. What's a little bit of background on him and uh, what the impact he's been able to make at Nebraska. Yeah, so he got to Ranger, didn't know much English at all. You know, just ended up in the, I'm trying to be nice, the middle of nowhere, right? Um, from everything he knew, so far away from all of it, and then, you know, played really well there, and Nebraska ended up finding him, and it's been, you know, a great journey for him. Even when he got to Lincoln, he really didn't know a whole lot of English, but he knew how to play basketball. And, you know, through that immersion, through three years now of experience at Nebraska, he has, you know, completely come into his own, right? Like, he's... Like, he's dating a, a girl from Nebraska. Like, his English is getting a lot better, a lot more conversational. He, just to know what he grew from, from last year when I first got here to now, it's incredible. And then you look at him on the basketball court, and he is not afraid of anything or anyone. Like, he, if, he wants to, if he wants to and if he sees it, he will drive to the basket and go get a layup just because he's not afraid of anything, you know. It doesn't matter if there's, you know, 28 seconds left in the shot clock and he's, you know, being heavily contested from outside the arc, like, at the logo. If he's feeling it, he's going to shoot it. So, for Texas A&M fans, he's one to watch, but he's not... If he doesn't get going, that doesn't mean that Nebraska's going to lose. Nebraska has a lot of different weapons, and I think that's going to pose problems for A&M because if you only have your attention on one guy, Nebraska's going to make you pay. We'll be here at the FedEx Forum, uh, I would say, all weekend, at least through tomorrow. One of us will be probably be going home to see who it is, watch the game, and then check the uh, uh, Lincoln Star Journal and uh, the Bryant College Station Eagle for continuing coverage of uh, the NCAA tournament here in Memphis.